another video on faffing around with cooking partridges in jars. So I wasn't 100% happy with um, the partridges that I cooked in jars. They were nice, uh, but I think they could be nicer. So I was having to think about it and about what I was going to do, and this is what I'm going to have a go at. So I'm not going to cook them with oil in them, like an olive oil and vinegar or wine. I'm going to cook them in stock. Uh, which has got uh, quite a lot of wine in it. So it's a nice stock that I've made. I've seasoned it with salt, so it's a little bit salty. Uh, so that will, uh, seasoned salt, salty stock will transfer and season the partridges in these jars. So slightly over seasoned the stock. And I've done a ratio of um, 400 milliliters of stock to 200 milliliters of wine. I've just used some cheap stuff because I'm only playing around. So obviously that's quality of wine, that's quality of stock that you use the better quality outcome you will have you will have and then i was also kind of thinking that i probably cooked the partridges for a little bit too long uh, and the partridges were sealed so i brought the partridges up to temperature uh, cold um in a pan of cold water up to boiling point and then simmered them for an hour that was probably too long so what i was thinking of doing is i'll keep um, um well it, it's difficult because you're dealing with um, cold glass and hot liquids and if you put hot liquids over cold glass uh, it wants to uh, crack the glass also when you put a lid on something it, trains, it, it changes the I'm sure this is right it changes the atmospheric pressure so we're also kind of dealing with a pressure vessel, vessel as well so we need to bring up the temperature slowly so the pressure, pressure inside the glass the sealed glass jars uh, adjusts slowly so it doesn't expand too fast or contract or all that kind of thing will explode so i'm going to cook them in a pan of water with the lids off and i'm going to put in hot stock and it's going to be hot water in the pan hope this is making sense it's making sense to me so two partridges in a jar i put in a few peppercorns and i put in a bay leaf as well we boil the stock we've got a pan on the back uh, which has got the hot water in already so stock into hopefully I've got enough stock hopefully so stock into a jug and then it's easier to pour and pull that over here just gets a bit steamy sorry can we see can we see where's the yeah that's something to do about so we'll kind of see over here so stock into jars I've washed the birds as well so I'm not clean I've tried to take off as many feathers as possible, but you always miss feathers. One of these, um, two of these partridges aren't the best quality, so they are going to be my test partridges. So we'll cook them all and then two partridges that aren't so good are the ones we'll taste and they're cool. That there, so everything's covered. That was a good guess. So that was these jars hold. I need a bit more. Work. Just put a bit more stock in. So I ended up using four eight hundred milliliters of stock and four hundred milliliters of cheap wine. So that'd be fine. So stock's already boiled, so that's fine. So now, jars into the water. If they explode, I'm in trouble. I don't think they will. Like this. And then we're going to cook them with lids off the jars and simmering water. So, that to the front so we can turn it up a little bit higher. Don't want the water boiling over. And we've just got some lids. And we'll just put the lids in there so the lids are nice and sterilized like that and then I've got some more water boiling in the kettle so I can just top up here so as long as the water doesn't boil into the jars it should be okay so and the water's just about up to the top of the where the stock level is so I'm not wanting to, the uh, water to kind of jump into the um, jars uh, I don't kind of want that to do. And I reckon once we're up to temperature, I reckon we'll need about about 10 minutes of simmering before we can uh, put the lids on the jars. And then we'll either decide if we want to cool it down in the pan in the water or we want to pull the jars out. So that's just all. 
wet on that. So, so we don't think, I don't think we have to worry. I'm not going to put a lid on the pan either. So I don't think we'll need to worry about jars cracking or anything like that. But, as always, I'm mostly back around. So I'm doing a bit of washing up. Sat night. I've been swimming. I'm hungry. And I didn't want to leave it any longer because the parchment window the parchment has come. Yeah, my friend dropped them off on Thursday. So I didn't really, I'm going out walking tomorrow. So it's going to be Sunday evening by the time I got around cooking these parchments. And I didn't really want to do that. So I'm rushing to do them on a Saturday night. I'm not going out or anything. It's just that I go swimming. I get a bit tired and I get a bit hungry. And I quite like a cocktail tonight. So I'm not doing anything else. So. something in the kitchen which would possibly be a reason why there's always lots of washing up to do. Anyway, so that needs washing. Okay. So looks like oh yes okay so I can see that the stock in the jars is actually moving around. So that would suggest that that's heating up as well. So, we'll kind of see how we go, but we'll get a new thing. So I've got it sugar bit by... Looking at how pink that is. Push, push down a bit. That's kind of quite warm. Ah, that's kind of... Yeah, so that's warm as that. So that should be fine. A little bit more stock in that one. Let's just put more stock. Mm. Mm -hmm. We'll put a spoon. That's a fork. So we'll just put a bit more stock in that pan just to push that down a bit. It should work. It should work. Ah, maybe the uh, the jars of <coughs> in the hot water, which has made them look like there's not enough stock in them. Maybe that's what that's done. Uh, so we'll get it up to a a rolling simmer. Bit of rolling boil, and then we should have some kind of room of fair temperature. But as long as we sterilize the inside of the carcass of the partridge and the outside of the meat, I'm just putting some old radiator, then that should kind of sterilize everything in the in the kind of jar. That you know, there's, there's going to be no kind of harmful bacteria that's going to penetrate actually the meat, it's always on the outside. So I think the sword, even if we slightly undercook the partridges, it should work. But I reckon let's send up a bit more. That does want to pop out. Yeah, I think ten minutes. 10 minutes from when. Get it up to the water up to boiling, but not so it's bubbling into the into the pots. And then 10 minutes. And then lids on cool down in the liquid. I think. I think. Yeah, I think so. I don't know if you can actually see, but I can see that the stock is swirling around. So it's certainly. Ah! What do? You can't 
can put this in here and we'll get an idea of how hot the stock is. If you're on 60. These are hugely accurate piece. Some officers that I'm using, but it, you get some kind of better idea. It's certainly good. It's certainly good enough to to uh, to tell me when I've, I've got my uh, yogurt up to the right temperature when I'm uh, activating the culture in the yogurt. So that's at 75. That's at 80. So that's kind of a that's okay. Right? Let's turn that down. So it's 75, 80, which is good enough to cook. And then. 10 minutes. So 10 minutes, put the timer on. So that should cook those partridges. I don't know if that's still That's still hot in that pan. Right, let's turn that down. Let's turn that down. concerned about that. Yeah, 10 minutes is going to be fine with these. The partridges are already starting to cook. So we're all right. We're all right. Yeah, I reckon 10 minutes is going to be good. 10 minutes is going to be enough to heat. Cook it enough. It smells good with the stock on the wine. But anyway, so 10 minutes and then we'll be back. Right, our 10 minutes are up. So, temperature off. Well, gas off. And then let's just fish out these lids. a little bit dodgy, I want to put on that lid so I know which one it is. That one there, that one there, that one there, that one there. So, I just have to lift them out a little bit. And just to ah, make sure the lids are tight. And back into the liquid. So, there we go. Leave those to cool in there until they're cold, and then sometime during the week, I'll have a look at that one. Next taste test on the partridge and for the um, compact partridge legs as well. So, I've done, I've, I've, I've made um, compact pheasant legs before, uh, but I hadn't done partridge legs. Um, and the first batch that I did, I haven't tried yet, but this is the second batch that didn't just quite fit in the jar, and I couldn't be bothered putting it in two jars. So we're just going to put them in one jar, and these squeaky even though can um, be for my dinner. And then I'm just taking the. This was the jar of the partridges that just weren't as perfect as the other ones so and we're going to lift this out and I've just heated it in some water is that going to be too hot too? no we'll be right so that out of the way because it's just going to steam and cause I'm going to put it there that space as always so that's that and then we'll fish out the partridge from this stock and we'll have a look at it so we cooked it for 10 minutes then let it cool down slightly in the stock and then warmed it up in the jar so it should be cooked all the way through and certainly shouldn't be overcooked maybe I should pour some of this stock off before it wants to explode everywhere I'll just drag it out So yeah, they're a bit rough with these two. Just a bit rough. 
if they're not cooked enough, what I can simply do is um, cook the other ones. I've got three jars, three other jars, and simply, simply leave those cooking somewhere else. And we'll just leave that one in there for a minute. Otherwise, we go on forever, don't we? So, I need that one will do. See how it tastes, if it's about a method of cooking. Mmm. Mm. That's nice. Mmm. I don't even. Five minutes before you can do it. That's nice. That's really lovely. Mm, that's what I look up. I don't think these are these will probably taste not that dissimilar from a comfy duck bag. So nice and dark. There's a lot more. Well, there isn't more sinews, but the sinews are smaller in the legs, so you just got to be a bit careful. Mmm. Delicious. Not going to say. We're coming towards the end of the game season, so the chance of me getting some more pasta is kind of quite slim. But next year, if I get some more, I think this is the method that I will use to cook them. If I'm not going to roast them fresh, I want to preserve them, I'll, um, I'll cook them this way. You can just see where the shot's going. I don't want to eat that. But the rest of it, lovely.